All right, today we're going to be installing this Add W1 oil catch can in my 2014 Sierra. Now this is their version 3.3 catch can, so it has the dual clean side outputs, and uh, this thing is awesome. What I really want to do is take a quick look at the kit itself, what it includes, and we'll talk a little bit about what a catch can does and why you might need one, and then we'll go ahead and get it installed. All right, let's take a quick look at this thing. All right, so you can see that this kit from Add W1 includes everything you need, it includes vacuum lines, hose clamps, a couple of check valves in this fitting. These are both required for the dual clean side output on this vehicle. Comes with a mounting bracket, the can itself, instructions. Uh, now this kit is specific to the GM uh, vehicles, the Sierra, Silverado. Um, but keep in mind that Add W1 has a whole range of uh, kits for various makes and models on their website. So I'll link to this product down below as well as a general link to their website in the comment section. Um, they also have a full range of accessories to bling it out a little bit under the hood. Okay, we've got this uh, kind of polished aluminum hose clamp, so that's going to look sharp. Let's take a quick look at the can itself here. I'm going to get this other stuff out of the way and we'll zoom in on this. All right, you can see I have the carbon fiber can here with the blue aluminum trim ring. I should mention that they have a full range of colors and styles on their website also. Um, the can itself has a dipstick so we can easily check the uh, level of the can without having to remove it. And when I talk about the dual clean side output, I'm talking about these two ports here and we'll talk a little bit more about that when we start the installation process. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. Now this thing is, uh, has a quality feel to it, a fine thread. Okay, so this is the uh, baffled uh, assembly here, and essentially these are split, okay? So when we talk about the, the dirty side, I guess, comes in here, enters the can through here, and then your clean side output comes out through here, okay? So the idea is that uh, vapor and contaminants are going to condense and catch in this can, okay? There is also a drain on the bottom, and they have a drain kit as well, so you don't actually have to remove the can. Um, which may actually be handy. I may go with that myself. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to actually start the installation process. And as we uh, go through that, I'll kind of talk a little bit more about um, blow-by on a combustion engine and why you would need a, a can like this to ensure that your, uh, your oil doesn't get diluted and contaminated. Okay? All right, let's get the fittings and the mounting bracket on the can here before we actually get into the vehicle, okay? These uh, fittings that go on the can actually include O-rings, so it's not necessary to wrap the threads in Teflon tape, but we will um, on other threads that we uh, install. Okay, I'm just going to wind these on. Make sure that uh, when they go on, sometimes you get the O-ring twisted a little bit. Now, right, these ones are rolling on nicely, but occasionally you'll find that it's, it's rolled. Uh, make sure that they're on evenly, okay? Another cool thing about this uh, catch can is you have multiple mounting positions. So we can pull these Allen head screws out and change the position of this bracket, all right? So this is a, I believe, a two and a half millimeter Allen wrench that we need to get them out. All right, so this goes like this. We're just going to drop these through. And I may have been able to do this with it on the can, but I thought I would uh, have an easier time. Uh, and I really didn't want to try to squeeze a wrench in there. I didn't want to scrape the can, to be honest with you. So we're just going to thread these on. You're going to need a 4 millimeter um, Allen wrench, or a bit socket, I suppose you could use. And this is an 8 millimeter um, wrench. You could use a socket for that as well, okay? And we don't need to crank them down. We just need to make sure they're snug. Right. Now at this point we could mount this back on the can if we want to. All right. Again, I may need to change the location, so I may not mount it down all the way, I guess, but and those again were a two and a half, I believe. Okay. Just like that. Alright. Now we'll wind these in. And again, we have the O-rings on there. And we're going to tighten those down with a 19 millimeter. And again, you don't need to go crazy with it. Just need to make sure that you're compressing the O-rings a little bit. And again, you could use Teflon on those if you want to. 
right, so on the Sierra and the Silverados, the recommended mounting location is right here above the brake booster, okay, right behind the master cylinder. And I think that's a great location because uh, you can easily remove the can. There's nothing below it restricting the removal. And if you did happen to spill um, any of the oil or uh, contaminants in the can, it's not going to fall on anything really that vital, okay? It's going to be easy to uh, clean up. It's pretty much going to go right through onto the garage floor, okay? Let me get a couple of wrenches because we do need to remove uh, this support bracket bolt here. All right, so on closer inspection, it actually looks like that nut is welded to the support bracket, so you really just need a ratchet or a wrench, half inch. I have a half inch socket on a uh, 3 8 inch ratchet here. You can see it's not in that tight. Gonna take a rag, clean that up a little bit here before we mount it. All right, so I think a good idea would be to let's get it mounted, and then when we start running vacuum lines, we may uh, decide that we have to shift it one way or another, but let's just get the uh, can mounted here so we can start figuring out how this is gonna go. I do have a little bit of shift just, uh, just with the bracket alone also. All right, as I stated earlier, this is a great location because I can easily remove the can. And uh, you can tell that this thing is sturdy. That bracket is sturdy and uh, it's not going anywhere. All right, before we start running vacuum lines, we're gonna wanna remove this entire plastic intake piece here, okay? Just a couple of clamps, one right here. You can use a, a straight screwdriver, a small socket. One right here. And then we've got a couple of uh, valve cover breathers here. And these actually have little release clips. I don't know if you can see. I'm pushing on the underside, and that should allow it to release. It may be a little more difficult with one hand, but there we go, okay? Same on the other side, except this uh, release mechanism is on the top, so I'm gonna push down. You'll be able to tell which side's spring-loaded, okay? And once you get past that little ridge, and I'll show you the ridge here on this side, it'll be easier. It's a little ridge here, and all that release does is allow you to get by it, okay? All right, at this point, we can pull back towards the front of the vehicle, I should say. Actually, so it'll be front, but back away from the engine, uh, which releases this intake boot. And then we can pull uh, toward the driver's side to release it from the breather mechanism, okay? And that one's on there a little tight. Okay, let's just get this out of the way for now. We'll take a look at it here in a minute. All right, let's briefly talk about the uh, next phase of the installation process, as well as the basic functionality that a catch can provides and how it may prolong the life of your engine. All right, What we're looking at here just below the throttle body is a vacuum line that utilizes a quick disconnect, uh, very similar to this one, just press and release. And it connects that vacuum line to a PCV valve coming out of your crankcase. Now PCV stands for Positive Crankcase Ventilation. The other end of this vacuum line runs down here along your valve cover and it goes into a port that uh, comes out of your intake manifold. All right. So let me just give you a brief explanation as to what this does and then how a catch can is going to uh, come into play, all right? Essentially, when uh, your spark plug ignites your fuel, um, a certain amount of uh, gases and water vapor and fuel and ash make it past the piston rings and they end up down into your crankcase. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and release this here real quick. Just press and release. And if, what we're doing is we're utilizing vacuum um, generated by the intake manifold to pull those gases and contaminants out of the crankcase so that they don't dilute and contaminate your oil, all right? That's all fine and good, except for the fact that those uh, contaminants, as well as a certain amount of oil, because it's being circulated and splashed around in your crankcase, are gonna end up into your intake manifold. Um, so that's going to gum up your engine and reduce performance, all right? What we're gonna do is we're gonna come out of this PCV valve. We're gonna come up into the dirty side of the catch can, which is right here. Okay, those gases and oil and contaminants and water vapor are going to end up down into this can through that baffled inlet that we looked at when we analyzed the can. And hopefully a certain amount of those will be caught in the can through condensation. And then the vacuum continues on through into your intake manifold. Uh, we'll talk about the second port here uh, in a little bit. Okay, let me just go ahead and release this other quick disconnect. And there we go. All right, this hose... And come right out and we we're, for this installation we're not even going to use this but you may want to hold on to it in case you want to reverse the installation 
All right. All right. At this point, we're going to grab one of the vacuum lines that includes a quick disconnect uh, that was included with the kit from Add W1. And let's take a quick look. This one's a little different. You squeeze both sides. Okay. We're going to connect this to the dirty side first. All right. All right. So I'm just going to feed this kind of underneath and uh, get it positioned. Push down. Okay, it works pretty much the same way as the one we just removed. All right. All right, I wanted to get you a good shot of the uh, intake manifold port right there. All right, we're going to take one of the uh, vacuum lines with a quick disconnect that's provided from uh, Add W1. We're going to run right down beside the manifold and the valve cover, just like the vacuum line we removed. You can see it right there. And we're going to get it on there and push it into place. Okay, this again is going to run to one of the clean side ports. And I'm trying to do this without bumping the camera. And I'm going to have to get my hands in the way. Sorry about that. Hey, just like that. All right. All right, you can see they gave me plenty of vacuum line here. Okay, that's another great thing about this kit. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to cut it yet because I want to get all of the lines in place and then find the best position for the can. And then uh, I'll cut them down to length so that we don't have an excessive amount of vacuum line. But I think it's great that they give you enough to position the can and pretty much anywhere in the engine bay, I think. So, all right, the next vacuum source is going to be installed here right before the throttle body. And we're going to drill a small hole in this little plastic intake somewhere and install a fitting. And the reason we're doing this is because there are times when the engine is running that the uh, intake manifold is not generating vacuum or it's greatly reduced. So for example, wide open throttle, uh, your manifold vacuum is greatly reduced or non-existent, okay? So when that's happening, you, your blow-by uh, could potentially be dropping right into your oil uh, pan. So what we're going to do is rely on the throttle body vacuum, okay? Because there's always going to be uh, a vacuum here because we're pulling air into here for combustion purposes. All right, so we'll just install it on top here as outlined by the instructions. I'm just going to drill a small pilot hole and I have the approximate center marked here. We want to make sure that we clean any plastic uh, shavings off from the intake before we get it installed here. All right, what I'm doing here is just winding some threads into the hole we drilled, okay? Now I'm using a quarter by 18 pipe thread tap, okay? Now if you don't have a tap like this, not a big deal. You could just drill a hole large enough for this to fit through, just large enough. This would actually probably thread in by itself, but then you could also use a nut on the back side. And you could use a little Permatex or something, but you'd want to make sure you put something on the thread so that the nut doesn't back off also. You wouldn't want that to get sucked into the throttle body, okay? Uh, I'm not going to wind that in just yet. Let's go put it in place, and then we'll wind it in and get this thing finished up. All right, let's get this installed here. All right. I should mention, too, that, um, you know, if you ever wanted to plug that, like, for example, if you wanted to remove your catch can, you could easily plug that, and it wouldn't be a, wouldn't even know it was there, okay? All right. We've got these things on the side here. Oop, that one's underneath. All right. Take a screwdriver, tighten down the clamps real quick, and then we'll finish up the vacuum lines. All right, let's see how this threads in. I've got a little bit of uh, Teflon tape on there, so it'll probably have a little bit of resistance. But and again, you could use you could use something else, Permatex or something. All right, we want it pointing just about like that. Eh, Might be able to go one more turn with it. All right. Now what we need to do is install a couple of check valves off the can here. I'm probably going to come out just a little bit, but I want it to be even so it looks nice. All right, this is what the check valve looks like. Okay, they are directional. There's an arrow on each of them, and both of them should be pointing from the can to the engine. All right, and what they do is they allow the air to travel in one direction. All right, this is required on these uh, dual clean port uh, cans. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to mark the vacuum line. And then I'm going to go cut uh, two even lengths so that they come off the can and, you know, basically look symmetrical. All right, what I'm going to do here is mark off the vacuum lines. And uh, I'm going to leave myself a little bit of wiggle room so I have room to shift things around and make them neat if I need to. Um, now this one, remember, runs to the port just below the throttle body. And one of these will run to the port that goes into the intake manifold besides the valve cover. And the other one will run to the plastic port 
uh, that we drilled into the intake just before the throttle body. Now with these two, it doesn't matter which goes where. Okay, they're both clean side ports. Uh, what I would do is make sure that the, you know, the lines look neat and tidy, all right? Let me trim these down and we'll get the thing finished up. Okay, measure it out. I'll leave a little bit of slack in case we need to move things around. All right, we're on the home stretch here. Last thing we need to do is hook up our dirty side. And this, uh, again, runs to the PCV valve just below the throttle body in the front of the engine. Uh, the only other thing I might do, I might actually pick up a couple more of these aluminum clamps for right here and here. I think that would look cool. I do want to say a th big thank you to uh, the folks over at AdW1. They've been super helpful. I had a couple of questions about the installation, and they responded uh, quickly and they gave me great assistance, all right? So if you like this product, be sure to check out the website down below. I've got it in the comment section as well as in the description. And they have a full range of not just catch can kits, but they have a full range of accessories for various uh, makes and models of vehicles. And I can tell you, everything on their website looks cool. If you like to look at this, uh, go check them out, all right? Hey, thanks for watching. Give me that thumbs up if you found this video helpful. If you're not a subscriber and you found it helpful and you want to see more of this type of stuff, hit that subscribe button. Uh, I do ATV repair, auto repair, home, home improvement, electrical work, you name it, I do it, all right? Thanks for watching. Have fun.